All right, welcome to Y Space. Hey, y'all. Happy day of the Happy week Tuesday. to you. Happy Listen, Tuesday. We don't have to it on days, because it's I day. Know. I know what day it is. It's a it's a whole new world. Um, we have an exciting show for you today because our Chiefs won. Yes. Some of us, our college teams won. Um, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Um, if you're not a big Taylor fan, Laura, this episode is probably more for you because though we have a little content, not as much as we'd like. Um, but I've got some stuff I want to talk to you about. Okay. And note for the audio, Becca has no idea where I'm going because I didn't put it in the show notes. Listen, the heart palpitations have already started. No, no, no. I told you there's no pop quizzes. I was going to tell you about a couple of things that I've seen lately. Okay. So I have watched Grotesquerie. Okay. I know now, you will be shocked, but I did not. I know. So, and for those of you who don't know what it is, it's a new show on FX. Um, Niecy Nash is the star, but it does have a guest starring role for our man, Travis Kelsey. That's right. And it is pretty bad haircut, Travis Kelsey. So. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and tell you a couple of notes for this show. Um, this is not a program for you. Not at all. Um, it is like gory times 400. So it's just, it's not good. Um, there's some jump scares. Um, hate those. Yeah. And not even really like it jumps out at you. It's just like, you feel like it's about to, and it never does. And so you just have this pent up anxiety, but um, here's what I'm gonna tell you, Niecy Nash. Uh -huh. I don't know that I'm like super familiar with anything else she's been in. She is fantastic in this show. She is like born to play this role. So she's a detective, um, Louise Tryon, and she's got like a real strained marriage, and her husband's in a coma. Um, she's got a daughter who's aspiring to be on like the my 500 pound life, which is a real weird story. Oh, I'm not really sure where that's going, but I feel like it's going to be a important. different aspiration than where I thought you were going to go. Yeah. It's very confusing. Um, I still don't really understand her storyline, but it's right. there. Um, but she's so good in this role. And again, I've not like seen her in a lot, so I don't have anything yeah. to compare it to, but like, I mean, this role was made for her and I'm going to tell you our boy Trav. Yeah. Is so good. Now, here's the thing. Ryan Murphy, I'm not super familiar with a lot of his stuff because I don't watch scary things. But here yeah. I am dedicated to grotesquerie. Um, Exception. So I, I have learned that he is like kind of cheesy in his writing. That, okay. that feels accurate, but it fits so perfectly with Travis's personality. Um, and he has kind of that like the charisma, the charm of Trav is like all over this role. So when they, when Ryan Murphy says I created this role for Travis Kelsey, he is not lying. Okay. It's so good. I'm not convinced he's not the murderer yet, but um, he looks good doing it. And he is, he's really talented. He really delivers it. Now, if this was well, some I, like period I, piece, serious thing, he would probably not be not his thing. Yeah. I have seen some clips on TikTok mm -hmm. that were not the gory part. And I was impressed that you could tell he was acting, but it didn't didn't feel forced. Like he was very natural yeah. in that role. Yeah, if he was nervous, man, you cannot tell at all. And they like it's weird because I can't tell what's going to transpire between him and Nisi. Like, there's yeah. a little bit of sexual tension, but I don't know if it's really just because it's Travis Kelsey and look at him, right. or if that's like going to be in the storyline. I kind of don't think it's going to be in the storyline, but yeah, like it's. Oh my gosh, it's so good. But yeah, it is absolutely terrifying. So I'll just have to keep you updated on what happens. Okay. Um, also, I was going to ask you, because we talked about wanting to see it in the theater. We didn't get to. Have you watched It Ends With Us? Because it is streaming now. No, I have not. No, I have not. By thinking. It's on the list. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so I did. Aaron and I watched it Friday night, I feel like. Okay. Um. Our girl Blake was perfect. I mean, she was so good. Yeah. Now, I don't know if I have a chip on my shoulder about Justin Baldani because of all the drama. 
but I'm going to tell you he's the worst part of the show. Is he the worst part because of his character or his acting is bad? Or I just think everything. So I'm familiar, I'm familiar with this character because I read the book. And I will say, if you are like one of these people that is like a book truest, like you want the movie to be accurate to the book. Yeah. I mean, it's accurate to the book, but a lot of stuff is left out. Okay. And so I didn't love those choices. The ending, I thought my TV cut out. I was like, oh, wait, what? It just stopped. Oh, that's not great. And there's so much more to the story. And so I was like, oh. I didn't like that at all. So it's not that I'm not familiar with his character. And he's like the bad guy of the story. That's what Aaron kept saying. Is he going to be the bad guy? Yeah, kind of. But yeah. I don't know if it was that. I don't know if it's because of all the drama. I just was like, ugh, get him off the screen. I, I have already talked. We have a very difficult time separating like our personal opinion of who you are as an actual yeah. person outside of acting from your role. Yeah. Now Blake was so good. And the girl that plays her best friend and Justin's sister's character, um, she's really great. I don't know who she is, but yeah. she's really, really great. Um, Blake was so good. I just kept looking at her body, knowing that some of the rumors were that he kind of fat shamed her and that she had just had a baby like four months before. And I just thought, wow, right? you Listen. are stunning. Like, I wish that's how I had looked four months postpartum. <laughs> I wish that's how I looked. Eight and a half years postpartum. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Um, the clothing choices were, you know, we saw all those pictures while they were filming and everyone was like, what is going on? There are some clothing choices and I'm like, what is happening? But then there are some that are, and Blake has said in interviews that she brought some of her wardrobe and even Gigi's wardrobe into it. You can yeah. totally tell. There's some things that are like stunning and then others I'm like, what, is, what are we doing? Um, but it's so good. You need to watch it. Okay. Um, so those were some things that I have seen. Also, I've got something that's going to be in my why factor, but I wanted to ask you, um, have you been made aware of the Adam Brody renaissance that we're currently in? I have. I have been okay. made aware of this. It's also in my okay. why factor. Oh, oh, okay. Me too. Um, now, did you watch the OC? Yes. I now I didn't I don't think I saw every season every episode but I watched enough of it that I at least had a grasp on what it was about. Okay. So Adam Rody is not new to you. Now, for those listening, Laura, Adam Rody is an actor. Um he used to be on a show called The OC. He's in a new show called Nobody Wants This. Mm -hmm. I can't wait till we get to the Y factor. Um anyway, I was going to ask you, how do you feel about Adam Brody just in general? I mean, I've, I think I've always liked him. He's not in a ton of things that I've watched, but when I do see him and stuff, I'm always like, man, he's really good. He's just a good actor. Yeah. He's good at picking the roles that he films with. They always I know. Like they suit him exactly what yeah. you imagine he's actually like. So no, or nobody, I always wants to, I always want to say nothing with us for some reason, but it's nobody wants this. Um, yeah. It's got Adam Brody and um, Kristen Bale. Adam Brody is also married to Leighton Meester, who was on Gossip Girl, so you know I love her. Mm -hmm. um, Kristen Bale said that when she read the script to this, she like instantly thought of Adam Brody. And now, like I, I think obviously because I've seen it with him, like clearly that's who I see. But yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like people should take notes from actors like him on how to pick roles that are perfect for them. Yes. It makes a difference because he's not a fish out of water and he's so good at it, but he's like just close to that kind of like quirkiness that could get on my nerves. Mm -hmm. But I think he's so he perfect. He doesn't go there. He doesn't get all. Yeah. There. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if that's like restraint or I don't know. So that was a note I had for you. Another switching gears. I already warned Becca that I'm going to be all over the place today. But in my entertainment notes, I was going to ask you about this. We've kind of briefly texted about it. Um, the Grammy nominations have come out. Yes, and this will take us into some Taylor talk. Taylor's got a lot of nominations, of course. Um, I didn't really, I think, understand how the Grammy process works in that you like submit your work to it I didn't really understand this and you submit it to whatever categories you want yeah I didn't really understand that I still don't know that I fully understand it but something I'm also perplexed by and we have shared some feelings on this show about Zach Bryan Ugh. so 
So Zach Bryan apparently made the decision to not submit any of his stuff to the Grammys because he said that he does not want music and art to be competitive in nature. Okay. Apparently this has been done before by Drake in the weekend. Now, I don't know if it's my feelings about Zach Bryan, Drake, and The Weeknd, but I want to go ahead and throw the BS flag on this. I was going to say, do you think that that's one of those, like, I had a good record, but it's not Grammy good, and I don't want to hurt my own feelings, so let me just get out there and be like, this is on me, guys. I don't I don't want to. Yeah, because here's what I'm going to say. This is what I think. I think pre his album coming out, Zach Bryan was like probably 100% in on submitting this for the Grammys. Yeah. And then it came out and like, I don't think he ever even got in like the top five with it. And so he's like, oh, okay. So I'm going to lean real hard into this like indie music thing instead. Yeah. yeah. That's because what I'm thinking. The deal. If I'm a recording artist, if my job is to make music and I'm famous for it, and I release something that can go to the Grammys. I am nominating myself for, I could sing country music. I'm going to nominate myself for Latin pop. I'm going <laughs> to nominate myself for indie. Right, right. If it's possible. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I uh, I just am throwing the flag. I think, I, and again, this kind of goes back to my not being able to separate myself and my opinions from the person and then the artist. Yeah. It may be some more of that, but I just, I'm throwing the flag because, I mean, Beyonce submitted herself and it ain't pretty folks. Like she's not getting, they moved her out of the country category. (laughs) They chose to move her. As a regular just listener of music and watcher of the Grammys, I don't know who's been submitted for what. So if you submitted for something and then you didn't get chosen as a nominee, The regular person's not going to know that. So that's no hit to your ego. Why not at least submit? And then you can at least say I was a Grammy nominee. I feel like that's something to hang your hat on. It'll be super interesting to see what happens. Of course, Billboard and Rolling Stone, they already have like their odds out for who's going to win what. Um, Billie Eilish and this birds of a feather thing. They think that that might win song of the year. Um. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. Taylor is obviously nominated for album of the year. She would break another record if she wins. I feel like when I look at it, it should be Tortured Poets Department. Who knows? It could be like Yo-Yo Ma by the end of it. I have no idea. But she did make the decision um, to submit I Can Do It With a Broken Heart instead of Cruel Summer. I don't know how I feel about this decision. (sighs) I mean, maybe because Cruel Summer's like it's older. old, but it had its renaissance now. It did. I, I don't know. know. I guarantee you that decision was based off of some kind of analyzing of streams and numbers and something somewhere. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask you about one other thing before we switch back to Taylor, because I skipped this in my notes and I, I would okay. love to hear your thoughts. Uh, okay. You have artists who go out on a stage and just sing, right? And then we have these, what I'm calling theatrical performances now. Chapel Roan okay. goes to the Austin City Limits this past weekend, and she, like, breaks the record for, like, most people attending a show there. Um, and it did look like, like a sea of people. And then, like, the camera pans to her, and she's dressed like George Washington. Like, she's got the white wig, the makeup white out. Like, so I'm like, okay, that's a that's a choice. And, I again, I am not a Chapel Roan fan. I don't like her music. So, but then also, like, Halsey has got an album coming out soon. And so she's announced yesterday she's going to do this thing where she impersonates an icon every week leading up to her album coming out. This week, she impersonated Dolly Parton and like to the nines, like hair and everything. How do you feel about theatrical performances versus artists? No, that's just not, that's not my lane to enjoy. Yeah. Because here's the thing. When you do things like that, you're missing the point of what you're trying to promote. I don't, I don't understand why we're promoting Dolly or we're doing 
George Washington? Like, what does that have to do with your music that you're putting in? Is it a challenge? Did you lose? Listen, if you lost fantasy football, I get it. It happens. I get it. Happens. it. Listen, yeah. but just say that and just yeah. tell us how you're doing it. Because then we can all be in on the joke, right? Yeah. And like, oh, look what your friends made you do. But no, I'm more of like a just be you. That's why people like your music and mm -hmm. don't. The theatrics of it is more of, I think that's the younger generation because that's getting you clicks. Yeah. It's getting you views on things. Yeah. I wouldn't say that it's going to help you with nominations for awards or anything though. Now, do you see a difference between that and like what Taylor does when she's in like the Midnight's bodysuit or the red coat and all that? No, because you're putting on an like a outfit for your stage performance and you're still <laughs> being Taylor. You're not dressing up as like, I don't know, somebody from Hootie and the Blowfish, but singing a Taylor Swift song. Like, <laughs> I wasn't ready for that one. Hootie and the Blowfish, but. Yeah, I mean, you know, plaid shirt and cut up jeans. <laughs> same thing, same thing. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, that makes sense. She was there. Yeah, you know, I've noticed, again, I don't listen to a lot of Chapel Roan. I just now figured out that her name is Chapel and not Chappelle. Um, I just figured out maybe yesterday that that H-O-T-T-O-G-O, -T -T -O, that's Chapel Roan. Yeah, yeah. Not to go. I didn't actually yeah. know what she's saying. I just knew her name. Yeah. You know, I just, I I've seen her a lot in the media lately. She, you know, she's come out and made some really like spicy take statements and then canceled some shows because the pressure was too much. But then she shows up at Austin City Limits for the biggest crowd ever. Yeah. You just get Billy Eilish vibes of like, I like to make inflammatory statements and then act all broody about it. And I'm just out. Yeah. Listen, you can't you can't do clickbait and say things that you you know is going to invoke some kind of reaction from people and then be like, oh, my mental health, because yeah, mental health is important. And that is something right. that you need to take care of. But don't use that as your go to when you can't handle the repercussions of your actions. That's kind of where I. Yeah. Going. Well, and I saw today Billie Eilish is. I think she's in Vogue that's coming out this week. And she did an interview saying essentially like, I hope I, no one ever talks about my dating life again. I wish it had never come up and I'll never speak about it again. Like, Oh, okay. Like, okay. If you don't want to talk about it, then don't, don't bring it up. Like we didn't bring it up. I don't know. I'm just kind of out on all these people and their personality drama. Um, but Taylor is going back out on tour next week. The end oh. is near. I feel like these two months went by really fast for us because we were constantly like waiting for the next week and the next week so that we could see her at a game yeah. or something. Yeah, exactly. We've had the games and then we had the little lull when she wasn't at the games. But yeah, it did go by really quick. Um, and I think it's because it's like the end, like this is it. And I feel weird about that and like happy for her to go live her life, but not so happy for me and the life now I have to leave. I don't it's know. <laughs> It's kind of a lot, but um, also I'm wondering what's going to happen. There's, I don't know if you've heard, but there's a hurricane coming to Florida. There is, there is. And she's supposed to be in Miami next, like 10 days from now. Um, I venture to guess that probably doesn't happen. Well, that's what I'm wondering. I wonder like, in like a, not a direct hit, but they should be getting quite a bit from it. Yeah, I'm wondering what will transpire with that. And so then we go back to, like, does that mean she'll reschedule? I mean, we're, yeah. no. I um uh, about not just if the venue was damaged, but like hotel enough hotel space for not yeah. only people coming in to see Taylor, but all the actual Florida residents that are having to move into hotels because their homes have been flooded. Like, there's a whole, yeah. there's a domino effect there. Yeah, I mean, if I had tickets to Miami, I'd be nervous right now. But of course, yeah. we're trying to go to New Orleans, and it's still hurricane season. So, I don't know. we'll see. We'll see. I guess um, get it and hope for the best. <laughs> I can wear my goulashes. I'm good with it. Um, so our girl did come to the Chiefs game last night. She did. Um, you had some pretty strong feelings about her her outfit, though. Did I? <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> I'm calling you out. So ugly. Listen. <laughs> listen. Okay. You know, so you and Laura will text me pictures of like, hey, does this go together? And you text me when you actually want an answer. Nobody texts me that if they want to be like, yeah, you look great. I'm not. That's not me. Yeah, I am no, not. Mm -mm. No. 
I'm going to tell you what it looks like because you need somebody in your life that's like, listen, there's going to yeah. be about 100 billion people taking a picture of you today. Maybe let's not this. Yeah. So, not my style, the plaid, the plaid outfit, not my thing. Yeah. But Claire's 1990s face paint glitter, for sure not my thing. And those shoes. <laughs> I don't know how she walks in them. I noticed she lost them when they went out last night. She wasn't wearing those. Yes. Because I'm, I'm sure even she was like, there's a line you have to draw. I mean. I can't even fathom walking in from where the golf cart drops her off. So then you have to walk down that ramp to get to the suite. The ramp. I know. All of those people. Do you know how much mental focus I would have on do not fall on your face? Like one foot no. in front of the other. Mm -hmm. I just, that no. takes a lot of mental capacity that I just. I can't do that in like flat. I no. mean. I'm tripping my tennis shoes going out. Listen. Yeah. It was. Um, it's very nice. It was a vibe. Maybe. So. I heard a rumor, but I have not really, the pictures that I have seen that have come out today, nothing is really collaborating or corroborating with this um, notion that perhaps last night they were going for like a 90s vibe at like going out. If that is the case, only she and Travis were in. They forgot to send the text. No one saw that on the invite. No, no, they I guess they clicked the evite. Yes, I'll be there too quick, um, which I would have done too. So, um, <laughs> But they matched. I mean, he was wearing a black plaid ish yeah, shirt and maybe the worst I've ever seen him look. Yeah, it was rough on both accounts. Um, I, I don't know. But, you know, one of the notes I had in my thing is, you know, everybody, of course, there, there has to be Easter eggs everywhere. Right. And so she has been wearing a lot of plaid. She has a lot of plaid and a lot of UFOs, which not a phrase I saw myself saying. Nope. I mean, um, what does it mean? Well, I was going to say, do you have any guesses as to what that can mean? Because I even started thinking, I was like, okay, maybe it's hinting at her next album. But then I was like, what does plaid and UFOs have to do with a new album? I just yeah. thought she would put some futuristic something out there. That's more of like a Katy Perry lane. I just don't yeah. feel like a Taylor's lane. No. So I, this is my assumption. Um, I've got a couple of theories as I typically do. Um, okay. So the UFOs that have been present in multiple outfits now, now in her purses and in her earrings, which yes. I yeah. mean, buying UFO earrings is a whole thing. Um, but it's all Vivian Westwood. Right. Which and I know that is little, right. Yeah. That's her like emblem. Travis has worn a shirt with it. And I know the world wants to believe that that means Vivian is making her wedding dress. Me too. I hope so too. Actually, I don't really. I hope it's Stella. But anyway, I hope it's Stella. So, like, yeah. I mean, sure. We hope that that's in the works. But I'm wondering if two things with this: is she coming out with some kind of collaboration with Vivian Westwood, like she did with Stella during the Lover era? Okay. Or is Down Bad the next single? Because Beam Me Up and she sits on a spaceship thingy on stage. Or are her and Travis going to be in a reboot of the movie Clueless? Because that's got nice. Oh, for Pete's sake, I didn't even think of that. Well, so that's the only thing I, they, both are dressing like 1990s is coming back in style. And then all I could think of 1990s with plaid is Clueless. Movie. Clueless. Well, that one outfit. Yeah, that's a good point. I did wonder if, you know, because everybody says she's like writing a screenplay, right? Um, and that's what I believe she's going to work on when the tour ends. I have wondered if it's like set in the nineties. Do you remember that friends episode where Joey is in some like off Broadway performance and they're like in the middle of this like yeah. farmer's wife love scene. And then he gets beamed up. Yeah. It says we're going to have like a TTPD Broadway show <laughs> and then randomly in the middle of it, people are going to be beamed up and down. That makes no sense. And does it go well? Along line, but I mean, she did. She did do the um, what you call it when she like, oh, what is the word I'm looking for when she um, copyrights uh -huh. the female rage, the musical thing. Right. I don't know. Maybe a UFO will be involved. I don't know. I'm not loving it. Um, no, I'm ready for the he, next whatever. Yeah. Um, if she follows her pattern, though, this plaid thing does mean something is next. 
So maybe it's like an indie rock album is TS12? Maybe. I guess just in my head, because of where she is in life, I was expecting a love pop album. We were gonna well, we can't go back to love her. We could. She wants to. Whatever she wants. That's I valid. mean, valid, valid. But she was at the game, and Travis was there. Um, thank goodness. Um, he had a great game. I do think our boy may have gotten dinged up. I do. I think the shoulder might be a little, maybe something well, happened. A little sore today, um, but the Chiefs won. And again, Five not a eight. great game. Not a great game. Wasn't their best game. Patrick still looking rough, but making magic happen. I mean. Yep. Can you imagine your team and you know we're not our best? Our quarterback who's like the vital part of this team. Yeah. Not our best. And you're still 5-0. Oh. Yeah. yeah. No, I can't still imagine still it. Still wins. Well, I'm just saying it's if just I'm other wild. teams in the NFL, if I'm other teams in the NFL right now, I'm I'm nervous. Because I'm looking at the Chiefs yeah. not playing their best and they're still winning and I'm like, "Oh, yeah, we're in trouble." Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. Listen, I um know. yeah. Who Okay, let me ask you some questions that okay. you have not been prepped you've not been prepped for. Um, are my favorite. So I love yeah, this. Of course. Who who delivered your favorite performance in the game last night? Um, Xavier Worthy getting that okay. touchdown. I, I liked that it was a weird play. I didn't understand why Travis was in the quarterback position. Yeah. I was like, where's, where's Patrick? Because when I see 87, I'm like, that's supposed to be 15 right there. Yeah. So I missed, I missed the trap or that Patrick was off to the side. But so that was like a fun play. I always enjoy when they do something weird. That you're like, mm -hmm. well, that's out of the norm. Then yeah. I love it. Not only did Xavier get a touchdown, which all game I was rooting for him to get some kind of crazy touchdown, but then he ran to his mom on the sidelines. So I, cute. I love that. I love it. Yeah, like, he it just felt, like the guys were trying to celebrate around him, and he put his hand out and just starts running to his mama. <laughs> I, I know like, poor Travis was like trucking it behind him, trying to, and then he's like, I'm just ran off to the side. That yeah. was a good one. Yeah. I, he's just so likable. Yes. Yeah. And um, I did really appreciate my son saying, gosh, mommy, she's younger than you are. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. Great. So much. Good to have you here. So different life choices, different life choices. <laughs> yeah. I didn't need that at all. And I was like, well, she, I thought when he first ran up before they said who it was, I was like, oh, that must be his fiance. <laughs> no, no, it was his mom. I didn't see his fiance when they kept panning, but they weren't panning much past her. No, so like, well, she was really hamming it up too. I thought she was hilarious. Um, but yeah, I would be too if my son just got a touchdown and he yeah. plays professional football and he's great, and then he gives me the ball. Come on, put that yeah. camera on me all day. I'll be smiling. Yeah, but I'll tell Judd when he's talking about how old I am again. That's Jeez. right. Um, yeah, this kid. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, he was fantastic. I was really happy for Juju. I was not real happy when he bobbled that pass. But I was happy that Bink got the interception. He's so like cute. And then Doug was like, that's the same thing. I was like, I'm still conflicted right now. <laughs> no, I know. I was like, I don't know how to feel. But the way he trucked it at all 324 oh, pounds of him. Oh, my gosh. He was so good. He was going to take that and run for the hills. I loved it. I really wish that they would have given us footage of Cam when it happened because yes. you know he and his mom were flipping out. Oh, of course. Of course. And laughing. Um, you know they were laughing at him. Yeah, like cackling. Um, I loved that. But I was happy that Juju had a big game because he was so misused in New England. And so, and I just love that everybody's coming back. I mean, he's yeah. back. Jody's back. I'll tell you something. Kareem Hunt, dude, I don't yeah, know how he stands up and walks after each play. Just there were like only two him. that I saw him kind of hesitate to get up, and I was like, oh, I'd be down. I would be like, get up and have to like pick my leg up off the ground and carry it to the side. Like, how are you? I don't. What I saw the and the crashing sound on their head. It worries not me. Good. It's not good. It's not great. Let me tell you, when you're sitting in the stands and you're eight and a half, you're whole, you hear the helmets crack. You're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, 
I read last night that he ran an additional 64 yards after the first impact with a defender. And I was just like, holy Moses. I mean, I'd be down right there. Just, oh, you touched yeah, me. Back 10 yards. Like you yeah. Like me. And it would only happen once. I assure you I'm not coming back for twice. Uh, pulling a sub, and then I would be on the ground behind the spot. Yeah. Now, how are you feeling about Carson Steele now that we're three games in a row that he's lost the ball? Listen, he came out swinging on his first game, and I thought, okay, okay, maybe we've got – He has moments. Moment. Yeah, it's just not consistent enough that I would feel – I get very nervous every time he's – Same. In, and I'm like, ooh, I realize you put him in, you're about to play for him to run, but maybe we don't. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we get somebody else. Can we I get there? Is it too late? <laughs> <laughs> I noticed last night it was post him dropping the ball. That he was running one and he held on to it. But I noticed the offensive line. I noticed Creed for sure turned and just like stared and watched him because, you know, he's just waiting for the ball to pop out so he can get on it. Yeah. And I was like, I feel you, dude. Like, be close. Which be near, my friend. Be like, near. That's football 101. Protect the ball. What are we, what are you doing? Well, I but I'm going to judge you because that's your job and you're supposed yeah. to be good at this. Well, someone else I'm judging. I, um, in the words of Melanie Shankle, somebody I'm side eyeing today. Hi. Good to Jawan Taylor. Can we have one game where you don't get a penalty? Apparently not. You've yeah. had more penalties than like the whole NFL. Listen, like, every time they throw a flag on him, the announcers always go to, oh, Jawan Taylor, the most penalized offensive lineman. And I'm like, I know. We all know. Why yeah. is he still out there? So this is what I'm wondering. I don't I don't know how the line works. It's not something I'm familiar with. Nobody in my family has played the line. So I'm not like, I don't really understand what all's happening. Yeah. I'm assuming there there is a massive difference between being on the left side and the right side because we had that whole movie, The Blind Side. So I'm right. assuming it's a thing. I don't understand. So like we've had Wanye Morris, which I thought he broke his leg last night. And I was real worried, but thankfully he came back in and was fine. Although Patrick did get sacked a couple of times because of him. So I don't know. Yeah. But, you know, Wanye was not starting this season. That rookie, Kingsley Sumama. Ma, 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 you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, he was starting. Then they took him out because he was getting penalties. Could we not put Kingsley in for Jawan and just see what we got? Yeah. I'm not understanding. There's got to be some repercussions on the Chiefs. Like, what are you guys but, doing? Because I feel like he needs to have like a talk. Multiple seasons this happens and we still just. I just, I don't get it. He, it, every time they say his number, I'm like, son of a, again? Right. Listen. Um, so that wasn't great. Um, it looks like Derek Carr really hurt his oblique. Now, are you familiar with what the oblique is? <laughs> <laughs> no, for the audio, the hesitation was extreme right there. <laughs> I really wanted to sound smart. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's the muscle on the side of the rib cage. But then I realized, Rebecca, you're an idiot. You don't know. <laughs> no, that is it. It is. Oh, look at yeah. me. Lean into I'm it. Know, but I'm three classes short of a nursing degree. <laughs> oh, okay. The fact that there was any hesitation, I am startled and thankful That's you are not a nurse. Finish. I did not finish. <laughs> yeah. It was before you got to anatomy, apparently. Right. Um. No, but it is, it's apparently like the outer layer of your lateral abdominal wall. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that to me sounds like a side stitch from hell. Yeah. Well, he even said in the post game press conference, because somebody said like something about whoever hit him and he said, it wasn't the hit. He said, I felt it before I got hit. So when he turned to try and throw whatever he did tweaked something in that muscle and i'm sure that hit just finished it i mean i can relate i can sneeze wrong and think i've like thrown a rib out yeah Listen, i mean i get it i get it Derek. same page same yeah page. yeah probably time for you to retire is all i'm saying um yeah. the saints didn't look fantastic we really should have molly walked them um they but didn't they look great so strong their first two weeks that i really hoped that Derek would have a good season that maybe he felt comfortable hanging his hat and being like, I'm good. But yeah. man, it's really taking a turn. They need to play yeah. like 
Miami or New England or somebody to kind of give them their <laughs> boost the confidence. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't know. They were without Taysom Hill and I saw that, um, I don't remember the exact stats, but it's basically like when Taysom is in versus when he's out, they like score like quadruple the amount that they're scoring right now when he's in. Um, so I, I know they've got some key players out. They had some key defenders out. I still don't think it would have mattered. Um, but yeah, I'm still not just comfortable with these games. You know, our next game back after the bye week, do you know who we play? The 49ers. Do you know it's, where we play them? Is it in California? Yeah. Yeah. It's not, I'm nervous. Out several of their players. The rumor is that McCaffrey's allegedly going to try to come back at that game. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess we'll see. They said that he practiced without issue. So I don't know. And can like, how much can he go? I, I don't know. Um, yeah. I don't feel good about Horrible with their backups. So. No. Yeah. I definitely think the Chiefs have got, we got some cleaning up to do and hopefully they come out swinging. Yeah. Next time. I just wish it could be a little later in the season and maybe at least Pacheco would be back. Yeah. I don't know. Something. I mean, listen, Kareem was running like a madman, but like how long can his body sustain that? Because he's older. I guess it's good that we've got this bye week right before so we can get all of our yeah. players back to a healthy status or. I well, the ones we're that we're going to get back, healthy. yeah. But Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm not feeling great about it. But overall, I was happy that we won, of course. I was happy that Taylor was there. Um, and I don't know. I guess that's probably the last time we'll see her for a minute, at least at his games. Yeah, it'll be late December games probably that we would see her again. So sadness. The sadness becomes us. We have to lose the Eras Tour and that. <laughs> I know. Um, let's follow up on some of our predictions from this past week. Let's see how yeah. we did. Um, awesome. Panthers versus the Bears. How did how did you do? Well, I I picked the Panthers. Um, I said it was well, going to be, wanna... be close, and I I was wrong. Listen, if you guys are <laughs> using our predictions to make bets, yeah, maybe yeah. a question your own life choices. But B, yeah. maybe make those bets with like Monopoly money. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I saw feel somebody like yesterday led you astray. Because this I year, saw somebody was yesterday, he put $27 down on one of these parlays, you know, when they pick like five or six things to happen. $27. He ended up winning $17,000 last night. I feel like I could risk it for $27. I, I think I can risk $27, $30 if I'm feeling, you know. You know what? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make me a parlay bet this weekend. Okay. I don't know yet what it's going to be. I'll keep you posted. But I'm just going to try. Because I think you're 30 bucks a week. What if I hit it one of these weeks? Listen, do it. Why not? All right. We'll see. Maybe that'll be a new segment on the show. We'll see. Okay. Um. Now the Bills versus the Texans. Hold up. Hold up. Did you predict oh. Panthers versus Bears correctly? Yes, I am not delusional. You no. hold on to this hope that Bryce Young is eventually going to be something. And I will say, no. he came in and did well. Yes, I think the reason that I picked Panthers over Bears, again, personal beef is your I just want beef. To, hey, yeah, I want to see him fail. So I was hoping yeah. for some failure. I went Bears on that one. That's why I'm feeling good about my parlay, okay? Okay. okay. <laughs> um, Bills, Bills versus, versus the Texans. Texans. How'd you I do on that one? No, <laughs> no. I did say it was going to be close, and it was score wise. It was a, yeah, it couldn't be any closer. I Bills. I really thought Josh Allen was going to have a stronger game because we all yeah. know in Stephon Diggs' face that, like, look who yeah. you left. It did not work out in my favor. Yeah. No, it no. did not. It did work out in my favor. So, again, hope and confidence for the parlay. <laughs> no. I'm going to tell you, though, I don't know what's going on with Josh Allen. I've seen everybody say, oh, he needs a wide receiver one. Maybe he'll get Devontae Adams. He's, I don't know. We'll see. I don't think it's that. I just, something is off. I don't know. It's kind of like for him and Joe Burrow, though. I'm like, y'all are not doing bad. Is it your defenses? Like, right. Because right. Joe threw like five touchdowns this week and they still lost. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. 
Um, but yeah, I got that one. Um, Saints versus Chiefs. Of course, we got that right. I mean, always. We're not. We're not stupid. Yeah. Um, you want to try some predictions for this week? See if you can re- <laughs> for some <laughs> redeem yourself. All right. So we got the 49ers are playing the Seahawks in Seattle. Yeah. What are you taking? I'm gonna go 49ers on this. I don't okay. know that Geno Smith has been consistent enough to be able to beat what the 49ers have. So I think mm-hmm. they're building up. I think they're strengthening their team because they're prepping for the next week when they play the Chiefs. So I'm going to go 49ers on this one. So I'm torn on this one because it's in Seattle. Like any, if it was in San Francisco, I don't think I would even question it. Is that like an intimidating fan base though? Yeah. Like apparently like the 12th man in Seattle is like intense. Yeah. I did not know this. But also, I don't know, because it's like you're coming off of a one point loss to the Cardinals, which I feel like has really got to piss you off. Um, And so I feel like they're going to come back with a vengeance because like that's going to have really made them mad. Um, But also, we don't need them to lose two games in a row and then play the Chiefs. I don't feel good about that at all. No, I need you Um, to feel cocky going into it. Like, look at us. We got this. And then. Yeah. So for the safety of my own team, I'm going to go 49ers, but with an asterisk that I think the Seahawks could win. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Okay. (laughs) Deplorable versus deplorable. Uh, The Browns versus the Eagles in Philly. How you feeling? Listen, I cannot wait to watch this game because it's like a train wreck that you know is going to happen and you get a front row seat. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Which side is going to be yours? I will be interested to see if the Browns start Deshaun Watson. There's a lot of rumblings that like from a lot of analysts and just fans in general that are saying we need to bench him and try something else. Um, I would yeah. agree. I don't think he's what everybody always thought he was going to be. Um, I'm going to go Eagles on this one merely for the fact that I do think Jalen is better than Deshaun. I don't know that that's saying much. So take that with a grain of salt. But Alex. he is supposed to have A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith back this yeah. week. So, Which I need for fantasy right. football. Yeah. So I think now that we've got some weapons back and it's the Browns, I think maybe they can get a win and get maybe a little bit of a pep in their step. Um, well, and it's in Philadelphia. I feel like that helps. Yeah. Um, yeah, so if you didn't watch any of the Browns game, I didn't really watch the Browns game, but I saw the footage. Um, they were behind and – Stefanski? I, feel I don't know. Yeah, the coach um, said, let's go for it on fourth down. And Deshaun is like, no, nah, and just walked off the field. Can you even? Yeah, I know. No. I saw a story this morning that, you know, he has beaten more lawsuits this season than he has thrown touchdowns. That should tell you something right there. A win's a win, I guess. A yeah, I mean. Win. You're still out of jail, so there you go. I'm going to go Philly. I'm going to say Saquon Barkley's going to go off. I, I think so. he's like, you know, I left the Giants. We're going to do this. Put you, get on my back. Let's go. Yeah, that's what I think. Yep, that's what I think. Um, all right, Lions versus the Cowboys in Dallas. I didn't think this one was going to be tough for me to pick, but it actually was. Well, I think it is because the Lions are not the Lions that we thought they were going to be this year in Dallas. Yeah is squeaking through with a few wins, albeit they're close ones and barely, but they are getting them. Um, I'm going to go. It's Ooh, game time decision. I saw it. I'm going to go Lions because even at home, Dallas has not been Dallas. I mean, the Saints killed them at home. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to go Lions, but I'm not confident in that at all. I'll, I'll say that. Just for, this, just for the sake of the show, I'm going to go Cowboys. Um, okay. I don't know if Micah Parsons is like out, out, or is he just like kind of dinged up? I, that could be a big determining factor. Okay. I'm going to go Cowboys just because it's at home. And yeah, I'm just not impressed with what the Lions are doing right now, which is very disappointing. I know. Very disappointing. I was really thinking we were going to have a big season out of them. And I don't know that that's what we're getting. No. Um, speaking of disappointing, um, how did your fantasy <laughs> How did your fantasy football team fare this week? Get my listen, nap pulled up. Listen, it wasn't good. It was not pretty. It wasn't predicted okay. to be pretty. So we'll put it at that. I'm going to be um, cutting some players this week. Oh, we're not even going to yeah. try to bench. We're just going to cut 
and start all okay. over. Um, well, you know, speaking of cutting players, uh, the Jets cut their coach today. Listen. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that I don't think it's going to matter a hill of beans. No. They're putting their defensive coordinator in as their head coach now. I don't. Yeah. I mean, I guess their defense has been better than their offense, but I don't know that that's going to help you because you still got Nathaniel Hackett. So, yeah. I don't. Yeah. I, I felt I'm bad not, for him. Like, I think it was a – Surprised he's cut because no. you and I had talked. Like he he was on the hot seat. We knew yeah. that was coming. I'm surprised how fast they did it. And I want to know how much Aaron Rodgers pushed for that to go ahead and happen. Because you can tell he is not a fan oh, yeah. of saying well, that. I saw where a lot of people were saying, like, why did you even bring him back if you were gonna cut him five games into the season? Which is a valid question. Right. Um, I also saw stories where it was actually not Woody Johnson that hired him. It was his brother. And so blood may have already been in the water. Um, and then I thought the choice to go, I mean, well, you're not going to promote Nathaniel Hackett to head coach. Let's be clear. But I also thought the choice to go with the DC as the head coach was kind of also saying like, all right, Aaron, you think you're better and you think he's that problem. You take over for the offense, you know, which is yeah. Where he wants to be anyway. So the Jets it's not gonna help. talent. You've got yeah. players to be a very successful team. And I do wonder if owners were trying to be like, okay, maybe it was your quarterback situation last year. So we're gonna give that to you as a freebie, but you've got five, six weeks this year to pull it together. Here's the thing: like, it's not like Sayla stepped into a winning or fantastic no. situation yeah. in New York. So no. he had a lot going against him and then you had the whole quarterback situation so it's not 100 percent just on him but he really i mean when you're watching the behind the scenes on the different documentaries and stuff i'm like you're just not the best leader maybe for that team that needs to be whipped into shape they need a dan campbell or like a andy reed somebody that's going to come in there and be a little bit more dominating and know what they're doing yeah i saw where people were like oh maybe belichick should go there no. He's not inherit. He's not inheriting a dumpster fire. No, no. no. I um, it. yeah. Who, uh, who on your team? Or maybe I should rephrase the question. Was there anyone on your team this week that uh, played well for you? <laughs> Listen, I mean, Baker Mayfield didn't suck. He was my highest scoring. So no, yeah, he did really good. Yeah, and they lost their game, so that that'll tell you something. But. Yeah. Yeah. I'm um, gonna miss the cut Jerry Judy this week, and that pains my heart a little bit, but my man is sucking it up. So yeah, I um Lamar Jackson went off for me this week, 33 points for four touchdowns. He had a heck of a game. Uh, of course they had to go into overtime, but it was the Bengals, so I kind of you know take that. Yeah. Um he did really well. I left Juju on the bench. That was a 20 point regret, but I still won. So well, there you go. I won by Four points, so let's let's cut it close. Um, but my worst player of the week, well, you know, I've, I've had issues with injuries, and um, my whole bench was on a bye week, so there was that. Um, but Tank Dale is doing nothing for me in Houston. No, I, do you think it's because they're doing they're using Stefan instead? Well, I kind of think he is filling in more at that wide receiver, too, where Nico Collins has, like, gone off. And so he's definitely wide receiver one. And so I don't know if it's because Tank got shot in the leg. I don't know, but it's it's hurting me. It's hurting me. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Pull it together. <laughs> I'm going to need Khalil Shakir from the um, Bills to get healthy so I can put him back in. But um, overall, I mean, I won by four points. I can't complain. There you go. Listen, it wins Let me win. check our – let me check our standings in the league here and see where we're at. Um, oh, yeah, okay. Well, you're not in last place. Um, your sister well, is. But <laughs> I can't even probably, find you. Are you in the standings? What's happened? Oh, you know, you're really not in a bad spot. I mean, in our in our division of the league, you're in – you're tied for third place. Yeah. In our in our division, I mean, overall, it's not great for you. But your yeah. sister hasn't won a game yet, though, so you've always got that to count on. Okay. Well, I had two wins, so I'll take that. Listen, yeah, there you go. the only wins I'll get, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take them. <clears throat> well, uh, speaking of the two of you taking a big L, um, do you want to talk about some college football? 
Because I wanted, I wanted to talk to. No, well, yeah. I think we'll go ahead and do it anyway. Um, so Alabama lost this past oh. week. Yeah, um, to a hospital. To Vanderbilt. To a hospital. Yeah, to Vanderbilt. You want to break it down for us? Tell us your thoughts and feelings. This, again, this is one of those games where the score at the end does not show how the game actually went. It ended with thirty-five to forty, Vandy. I'm going to tell you, I don't know how Alabama got 35 points. I yeah, like I don't was, either, honestly. Some of those had to have been just added, accidental bump. Vandy yeah, played like, a heck of a game. They, they did really did. Fantastic coming out. I love yeah. to see it. I love that Vandy is having a better season. This It's a different team, and I don't think that the teams going up against them are prepping correctly for them. Um, no, because your Missouri Tigers almost lost to them. Yeah. I mean, they took so, Missouri to overtime. So, yeah. I think Vandy definitely gets credit. They played a heck of a game. Alabama was outplayed, they were outcoached. Um, yeah. I think that we had a lot of Alabama players that went in with a mindset of, I really don't have to give it my all here. Um, mm -hmm. And it showed because you did not get yeah. your all and you lost. But Heck of a game. It was not great on my heart to watch. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, didn't love it. Didn't love it. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I mean. I was just going to say, say the ending, Malachi Moore. Mm, yeah. Um, I'm going to need Coach DeBoer to take a knee. Let's have a chat, sir. <laughs> um, I realize yeah. that you are much more calm and you want to let these guys kind of figure it out. That's not the Alabama culture. We don't go out and throw fits when we lose yeah, to a better cool. team that played better than us. So oh. throwing our mouth guard at the end, kicking the ball, that's yeah. not acceptable. You can't come on your socials the next day and put out this. I should have done better. You, sir, are a grown man. You're not a mm -hmm. kid. You're in your early 20s. You know better. Um, I'd be benching him. I'd be fining him. No, sir. Yeah. They get paid now, so. Yeah. That just his behavior at the end of the game made me embarrassed for that's not the Alabama. Saban would have been out on that field and Oof. pulled the ball himself. Oof, that would have been ugly. Yeah. Yeah. No. We he'd don't have been that. the he'd have been in the transfer portal, I firmly okay. believe. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's any reason to hit the panic button if I'm Alabama. I think no. it's one of those it's one of those trap games. I'm telling you, I thought that. There's a lot of trap games this week. I thought the Chiefs game was going to be a trap game. I mean, they're out there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think Vanderbilt's improving. I mean, it's still Vanderbilt. So, right. you know, um, I mean, that loss definitely stings. But um, I don't think it's, you know, burn the bridges and bat in the hatches kind of situation. But yeah, I think it's, I wouldn't want to be the team to play them next. I can tell you that. No, no yep. not even kind of. Um, no. But do you want to talk about your Arkansas boys? I do want to talk a minute about the Arkansas Razorbacks. Now, listen, I mean, almost always almost wins. But this time, we actually won. Heck we beat yeah. Tennessee at home. Again, I'm going to tell you, playing in Fayetteville was the deciding factor. If that game had been in Knoxville, wouldn't have been the winning outcome. Yeah. Um, I'm a little nervous because our quarterback, who's freaking killing it, um, he's like top three in the country passing yards and top five rushing yards he got hurt um still no word on what that's gonna look like um i didn't feel real awesome about his backup but then he ended up winning the game for us so what do i know um but yeah like i'm telling you they're so close to being really good i saw um david pollock i think yeah it was david pollock was saying like if i'm the razorback fans i'm mad though he's like because really y'all are like couldn't have been any closer to being undefeated right now. And he's right. Because we almost beat Oklahoma State in Stillwater. We lost yeah. to UAB, which was stupid. And then this game, we win. It's like, God, how do you freaking beat Tennessee? It, you know, like, yeah. I don't know. Um, I would say Tennessee did not look good. Um, they didn't Nico, look like Tennessee. Yeah, he looked off. I don't know if he was banged up. I don't know. It just looked, they felt underprepared is what I'll say. Um, I think again, same situation. I think they kind of looked at us like Alabama was looking at Vandy, and rightfully so. But it got to be careful. So <laughs> you never know. I was super pumped for um, the Razorbacks. Um, 
you know, I think it's going to give a lot of false hope, though. Um, and that's never a good place to be as a Razorback fan. Just, yeah. It's not good. Um, I was also wrong in my prediction, though, of the Michigan-Washington game. Oh, I, I went was with Michigan. I was not. I know you got once. There you go. Yeah. Michigan Woo! lost. So, you know. Um, let's predict some games for this week. Okay. Um, Penn State versus USC. Now, again, we know that I have a special place in my heart for USC. They did lose to Syracuse this past week. And Penn State is undefeated. I was going to say but Penn State. And at Los Angeles. So, what are you thinking? I'm, I'm still going Penn State, even though it's an away game for them. Um, yeah. I've not been very impressed with USC this season. So no. I'm going to give it to Penn State. Who knows? I am going to go with Penn State for USC. Because I think if they lose to Penn State at home following the Syracuse loss, they're going to be real close to getting rid of Lincoln Riley. And I think that would be the best thing for the Trojans. Okay. Listen, we, so, we wouldn't hate We wouldn't hate I would not be bad. Um, yeah. How are you feeling about the Red River rivalry, Texas versus Oklahoma? I think it's going to be a heck of a game. I know. Be- I mean, it's their first rivalry in the SEC. Not that yeah. it changes anything for them because they came together, but it's in Dallas. What are you thinking? Yeah, I don't love that they're playing in Dallas, but I, again, it is what it is. I'm going to go Texas. I feel like they are coming in with like they just want to prove that they belong in the SEC. Um, they've got strong start. Do we know if is Quinn back or are they still starting Arch? The last I saw, they were they were hopeful on Quinn, but it was still the plan right now for Arch to start. They weren't clearing Quinn yet, and so okay. I think it's going to be more closer to game time decision. Either way, Arch is holding strong, so I'm going to give it to Texas. I do think this will be a close game, though. I'm going Texas as well, but, and I asked you this the other day and you had one answer. I'm going to see if your answer remains the same. Mm -hmm. If you are Sark and you play Arch this weekend and he wins, Mm -hmm. do you stick with Arch even if Quinn is healthy? No, I go back. You still are a no. You're still a no. Just because Arch is good and he's doing the job he's supposed to step up and do doesn't mean that Quinn is bad. I know, but I'm just saying, do you not ride the momentum? No, I think I'd go back to Quinn. I don't want to take the confidence away from Quinn if he was still good when he went out. Arch is good. You can pull Arch. Don't start him. Start him in the second and then don't start him again until the fourth. Like, he can come in and do great. But I think I still want to start my starter. I don't want to knock the confidence there. All right, all right. I don't know. I still feel weird about it. I think it's because it's Arch Manning, and I'm like healthy because he's going to be my starter next year. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. Um. All right. What about Ohio State versus Oregon at Oregon? I think. Am I right? Are they both still undefeated? I I think think they are. Yeah. Listen, I don't want to pick either team because I really dislike the Ohio State. Yeah. But I even more so dislike the head coach for Oregon. So I'm going to go Ohio State. I think they'll beat them. Yeah. I'm going Ohio State, too. I kind of think, like, yeah, Oregon may be undefeated, but, like, what does that really mean at this point? I hate Ohio State, though, so it pains me. I know. Listen, they could both lose somehow, and I'd be okay with that. So, yeah. Um, Yeah. Any other football news you want to discuss? I don't think so. I don't think so. I hope that Alabama takes this bye week to uh, get it together. Yeah, Arkansas is on bye this week as well, and then we come back and play LSU and Fayetteville. So we'll see. Okay. You know, it couldn't be worse, but, you know, okay. Um, Would you like to answer some questions? I would love to answer some questions. And these questions you actually know about. So I do. (laughs) There we go. All right. From, I'm going to say Jace, right? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if it might be JC. No, I think it's Jace. Jace. Okay. From Jace. In Karma, the song, when Taylor Swift says, takes all my friends to the summit, 
what is your theory on what the summit is? Not speculative, of course. I do appreciate that you. <laughs> we do hold a very high standard here that we don't speculate, but we do keep that to personal lives. We are happy to speculate about this type yes, of stuff. Yes, absolutely. So um, I know your theory, and I want to start this because I want to end on your theory. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to let you go. So go ahead. So I have. I agree with your theory. Also, I think the summit. I think it literally means to the top. We have talked about how Taylor is very good at calling out um, what her friends are good at, what business ventures, kind of what lane to lean into. So yeah. I've always kind of thought that that line means a little bit more of like making sure that all of her friends succeed in their respective areas, taking them to the top, whether it's in movies yeah. or music or beauty, whatever the case may be. So I kind of think that it, could potentially mean just making sure like you're you are a piece of scum and you're not going to do anything but me and my friends are all going to go over here and we're going to succeed and make it yeah potentially, possibly no i like that I, that fits and feels right um i have long believed that the summit is a record label that taylor mm -hmm. will eventually own her own record label i'm honestly shocked that it hasn't already happened i do think it could be potentially part of what happens next year during the break from tour um i think she i don't know if it's called the summit i guess i think it's called the summit or does it just mean a record label um okay. i've just always assumed that she would set up her own label to do things the right way um because i think otherwise like even with where she's at now, it's definitely obviously a better deal and all of that than where she was with Big right. Machine. But it, it's there's still flaws to it. I mean, we saw that this year when part of their entity, you know, became Scooters. And so I just yeah. think that eventually she's going to want to do more of that. Um, and especially the way she really promotes these like younger artists, brings them on tour with her, these like nobodies, and then we all fall in love with them. Um, I think like a lot of what she's done with like Gracie's career, maybe Sabrina, I, I see Sabrina coming to her label less than I see like the Gracie's of the world. Right. Um, by the way, have you seen Gracie Abrams abs lately? No, I'm going to have to send you a picture. So she is on tour right now, which I guess we'll pause because she's going to be opening for Taylor again, but it is, I mean, I've never seen anything like it could not be more chiseled. I thought it was photoshopped. It's crazy. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'll send you a picture. It's crazy. Um, anyway, that's a side point. But anyway, yeah, I think it's a record label. I don't know. Um, we'll see. Um, okay, what are your top three favorite movies of all time? <laughs> and recast your favorite movie. All right, what are your top three favorite movies first? Okay, before I say these, and I know that I'm gonna be judged by you and whomever, I don't, I don't watch a ton of things. So okay. broad scope here. Okay. okay. Safe space. So my okay. three, no particular order. Elf. Home <laughs> Alone. <laughs> what are they ready? What are they all Christmas? No, just two. Okay. And then Sweet Home Alabama. Okay. All right. What are we recasting? I'm going to recast Sweet Home Alabama. And I'm oh, that's a bold choice. Right? Because it's it's cast really well. Okay. Um, right. But I'm going to go old school rom-com and I'm going to go Julia Roberts and George Clooney with it. Well, that is a vibe. Okay. Okay. All right. Just, okay. Yeah. I mean, it changes the story a lot, I think. But yeah, okay. <laughs> movement there was some older actors doing it maybe okay yeah i mean hey um okay. so i struggled with this question because there are like seven bazillion movies in the world and yeah. i've probably only seen like a very minuscule amount of them and i never remember things like no i Aaron will ask me all the time. He'll like sing a lyric and be like, what song is that? I'm like, I have no idea. And then he'll tell me and it'll be like one of my top favorite songs of all time. And that you actually you. just listened to 10 minutes prior. <laughs> yeah. Like that I'm humming as I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah. I yeah. just, I do not remember things well. And I also fall victim to like what I have seen most recently is my favorite because it's like yes. the freshest in my mind. So 
Yeah. I really tried to challenge myself to go outside of that box. Okay, good for you. And and to go back into the to the vault. So, okay. um, miracle. Wow. Okay. Is that the hockey movie? Yes, I felt very judged by the okay, and I was not anticipating it. So oh. that was. Isn't that like a, okay, keep talking. I'm going to Google what this means. Based on the Olympics. Like, we, we love America, Team USA. I feel offended by your response, but okay. Um, okay. I was thinking, okay. Secondly, I went with the presidential movie, Dave. That was a good one. Okay, that was a better response. Sorry. And then my third choice, um, Almost Famous. Oh, that's a good one, too. Okay, and I'm going to recast Almost Famous. Okay, who are we recasting with? Sabrina Carpenter. Ooh. I know. Ooh. See, okay, I knew it again. I felt it in my soul. She's got that boho chic side to her. I think it would totally that, fit. I agree. I, look at you. I'm Listen, a whole new person. If, if podcasting and being a mom just doesn't work out for you, I think you could go <laughs> into movies. It's pretty much. Bad. I mean, two weeks in a row is pretty much solid. Right. Um, seems like a good problem. career choice. Um, all right, from Ashley, what this song we both really struggled with, and I don't feel good about my answer, but what is one song performed by another artist that you wish Taylor had recorded instead? Okay. I mean, not that it's a bad question, Ashley. It's really not. It's just not. this is really hard because Taylor writes her own music. She does. And then to try and make her sing something somebody yeah. else sang. And then I'm like, but that's not Taylor's story. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So this doesn't feel good. And I don't feel good about my answer, but let's hear yours. <laughs> no. So I went with the song Burn from Hamilton, the musical that Eliza Hamilton. Wow. Did. Yeah. I know. But it's when she like finds out that he has had affairs on her while he's been away at war. Um, and then it's kind of like just her song where she's like singing her, from her soul. And I'm like, well, that's more of like a Taylor vibe. I feel like she could belt that out. So yeah. that's, well, that's a really good one. I haven't mean, I mean, even thought of that lately. Um, God, I love Hamil Hamilton. So good. So good. Um, I went with Need You Now by Lady A. That's actually a good, any Lady A song, though, I think Taylor could sing. Yeah, so I was like trying to think though that she would need the male counterpart. And I wasn't gonna go with the Bonnie Bear thing. I wasn't gonna go Ed Sheeran. So I didn't really know where to go with that. I was thinking Jelly Roll. I don't know. Why not? Listen. I mean or post Malone. Maybe, I was gonna say that. maybe post again. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't feel good about it. I don't like that question. I'm sorry, Ashley. Um, just had to be honest with you. <laughs> All right, from Jose. Of those eligible for the NFL Hall of Fame this year, first time ballots only, which three players would you select? Um, this was complicated because once I looked at the list, and by the way, I'm confirming because you sent me the list you were working from. That's the same one I was working from. He didn't mention this, but we went with modern era players. Yes. Um, so if you meant somebody other than that, like, yeah, and I went with their, it had to be somebody with the first time as a finalist. Yeah. Okay. I, I think I did too. Um, okay. I hope I did, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> when I picked and I was sold on it, and then I was like, oh, you're not a first timer, so. I okay, don't, gotcha. I don't know, but so um, I went Fred Taylor, he's a running back, played for the Jaguars and the Patriots, played 13 seasons in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Um he still holds the franchise record for the Jaguars for touchdowns as a rookie. That feels mm -hmm. impressive. Listen. That it does. Yeah. Yeah. He surpassed the thousand yard rushing for seven seasons out of 13. That's again, very good stat. So I yeah. went with him. I went with Julius Peppers, defensive end. He played for the Panthers, Bears, and Packers. He played 17 seasons in the NFL. As a defensive yeah. end, where you're getting pounded every time. Yeah, and you're like literally causing the train wreck every time. Yeah, yeah. 17 seasons. That's wild for me. He's the only player in the NFL with at least 100 sacks and 10 
and 10 or more interceptions. Again, a wild stat to have to be the only one in the NFL with that. Yeah. Um, and then my last one, I went with Antonio Gates, who is a tight end for LA Chargers, but also when they were the San Diego Chargers. He played for 16 seasons in the NFL. I always think it's impressive. He went undrafted in the 2003 draft, mm -hmm. and then you're nominated for Hall of Fame. Like those guys, you know, were incredible when you can, like, just under the radar, and then you came out swinging. So that's what yeah, I, I, um, so I struggled with this a lot, um, because of the whole first year thing. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I'm struggling with is what I thought I was struggling with. Um, in the list, <laughs> in the list that we were looking at, Eli Manning wasn't on it, right? No. Okay. I'm glad that you're saying this because but I'm like, he oh. is a nominee, right? I don't think we looked at a correct list. Wait, yeah. Wait, because it says last year. Like, no, because good. this article is September 18th, 2024, two-time Super Bowl MVP, Eli Manning, Luke Keekley, and Terrell Suggs, and Adam Benatari are among first-time nominees for the Pro Football Hall of Fame class of 2025. You know what it is? We looked at 2024. 2024. Listen, Jose, we screwed this up, and that's all to yeah. talk to you, buddy. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, so I'm going to tell you what I picked for 2024 as well. And now I'm wondering, did they already get in? <laughs> because well, I had Antonio Gates and Julius Peppers too. And now I'm like, are they already in the Hall of Fame? The 2024 class. Nope, that was in August. So, yes. They're potentially already in there. And I do think Antonio Gates no, is. Gosh, it is. <laughs> I looked at that date and I was like, oh, August, that's coming up. You guys, it's October. Yeah, I'm fairly confident that, yeah, but it like just hit me in this moment. So that was a fantastic one. Um, Professionals. Yeah. So let me throw out some other names for you okay. um, of some other people. So we've got Eli, um, Luke Keekley, Terrell Suggs, Adam Vinatieri. Now here's some other interesting names for you. Marshawn Lynch, oh. Darren Sproles, Demarius Thomas. Tight ends Vernon Davis and Delaney Walker. Um, defensive backs Antoine Bethea, Akib Talib, and Earl Thomas. Okay, there's some big names in here. Um, now, of the people that we named, uh, Antonio Gates and Fred Taylor are back on the list, but this would be their second year. <laughs> so I think Julius Peppers got in. Um, so of these, though, so it's weird because, and see, Aaron has this beef with me. Because a couple of years I made him pick Eli in fantasy football and he always did terrible. And so he really holds it against me. But if you think about it, Eli has more rings than Peyton. So he does. I'm just he saying. Not the years that Aaron had him. Um, yeah. But, and then when I think about people like Luke Keekley, I'm like, yeah, he was fantastic, but he didn't really play very long. No. Um, so of these though, I also think about Marshawn Lynch. I'm like, not that I don't feel like his career might have been worthy of it, but I just can't picture him in the Hall of Fame. No, it just doesn't feel right. No. Um, so I'm going to go Earl Thomas. Okay. Vernon Davis. And I think Eli. I think those are good. I mean... You know, Jose, yeah. we weren't we weren't prepared for you, to be honest with you. We we prepared but in, inappropriately. And yes. it just hit me in this moment. So it's not that we didn't verify with each other. So we even double checked uh, what we were doing. Yeah. We yeah. It, and then Yeah, we, Becca sent me a list and said, Is this what you're going off of? Yep, sure is. Yep, <laughs> same one. Totally wrong. Because my thought was, I don't really know these names that well. And I thought I would know yeah. some of the names. Well, no. in this 2025 list, I do know a lot of their names. Um, so there's that. Um, are you ready for some Y factor? I am ready for some Y factor. All right. What are you not liking? So what I'm not liking this week, and I've got two. One oh. is more, if you live in Texas, last Friday at 4.50 a.m., we all received 
the uh, I heard about that. Uh, yeah on our phones of the government alerts blue alert if you will um of a white male in blue jeans in hall county that had shot at a police officer a couple uh, yeah, of I heard about this number one at 4 50 a.m i don't know where he is okay i'm yeah. asleep and you woke me up for this yeah um also number two i don't know where hall county is but i know it's nowhere close to where i live I looked it up okay. later in the day. It is seven hours away from me. Oh, okay. Um, and then the next thing, a white man in blue jeans. <laughs> seems seems broad. Right. What are, yeah. And you told us not to approach him. I'm going I'm let you in on a little secret. I don't <laughs> approach anybody I don't know. I don't yeah. even always approach people I do know. Yeah. And a, a white man in jeans, I feel like that's 98% of Texans. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's a good chunk of us. Um, yeah. So you can set your phones to where they don't get like the Amber alerts and all of that. So Doug and I had our phone set to that. Ryder leaves his phone in our room at night and charges it. His phone oh. was not set to that. I'm going to tell you, I thought I was having a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> but I would have paid to see it. I'm going to tell you. I would have paid to see it. Doug had gotten up early that day to get some work done. So he was not in bed, but my brain could not figure out where he that white man was <laughs> and his blue jeans probably <laughs> like it was just a whole thing so if you not do that again that no was yeah i did hear about that um i'm also alarmed if i ever go missing in texas you're not gonna know though because your alerts are off but okay i'm not Aaron, i just won't show up to the podcast like, have you seen mandy <laughs> <laughs> yeah just didn't show up to record today i don't know where she yeah. is okay yeah so that was my one. My other one is, why are we rushing the field after a football game, you guys, in college? Okay. Uh, I feel like that's a petty, petty move by you. It seems accurate. Well, okay. It started with Colorado rushing the field on a random day mm -hmm. of winning. Well, Listen. as you do when you beat Baylor. Because, I mean, it's Baylor. <laughs> that's a huge win. Just, I'm yeah. out of You're... And I know a lot of it comes from Alabama. We do not rush the field. If ever there were a time to rush a field, it would have been after that Georgia game. And guess what we did not do? We did not rush a field. I don't love it. First off, there's a whole lot of safety issues. Listen. Oh, yeah. I would never do it myself. Mm -mm, not happening. I think when they've showed videos, it's like people jumping from the bleachers down on the field and this guy jumped down and like his legs snapped. Like. Ooh. It's nope. your own safety here, but also a lot of our coaches are old. Okay. They can't get yeah. out of the way. Our chain gang, they're old. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's yeah. get everybody to safety. And then taking uh Vandy took the goalpost down nope. and then chucked it in the river. What are we doing? They had to go fish it out. Yeah, yeah. they had to go fish it out. Listen, can we not? I just I don't I don't love it. I don't love it. I Listen. get it. Listen, when you beat Alabama. I get that that is a gold star yeah. for your school. It's impressive, but I feel like we don't need to rush the field for that. I yeah. I mean, like maybe when you win like the national championship, I mean, I concur. I mean, I don't love it because I wouldn't do it. It would terrify me that many people yes. amok. Oof. But also I did see some Razorback fans that were actually very annoyed that the Razorbacks stormed the field because when you do that, you know, you get fined by the SEC like and all, well, we ended up getting like a $250,000 fine because Ooh. it was like second offense or something in so many years i don't i'm like how many times have we been able to do this like really is this time? um we hadn't beat a top five team in 17 years i feel like it was time um but what was super annoying for razorback fans was that all last week there was this massive campaign i think it actually ends tomorrow um about my favorite topic they were trying to raise money for the nil fund okay. um I forget what it's called, like hog strong or something like that. They were like incessantly blowing up all our Kansans to raise money for this. And then they're going to go out and spend $250,000. Yeah, make sense. not a good fiscally response. Yeah. So, you know, but I mean, the Vandy one I get a little bit more because like, I mean, have they ever beat a top five team? I mean, at least we had. I mean, it was 17 years ago, but still. Yeah. Um, I... I'm disliking Antonio Brown. Okay. Um, I don't know if that's spicy. I, I don't know if that's spicy either, but we've never really listen, talked about it. When you know when he played, I really liked him. Um, 
but his his social media irked me to absolute no end. And yet he did make a very racist, misogynistic post about Taylor and Travis last week. And that is what set me off. So, yes. But he literally comes for everyone. And it's always gross. And it's just inappropriate. It's just all wrong on 50 levels. Yeah. And he literally has a podcast and a show now called CTE SPN. And like, yes, sir, we are all fully aware that you are suffering from CTE. But like the fact that no one in your world can help you get help and is like applauding this endeavor. I just, I'm not here for it. Funding this podcast or is he doing it like us where he just gets on and chit chats with friends? Oh, I don't know if he has sponsors. I mean, I've never seen it, but um, yeah, it's, I just, he really needs help, I think. And yeah. it's disgusting. And I think if Elon Musk is going to like block people for things and pick and choose what he censors, like, can I do a write-in campaign? Because I think he should be censored. Yeah. We got to, whew, that yeah. could get wild real fast. <sighs> um, But what are you liking? Okay. So we talked about it a little bit and I was real excited because I knew you were going to be so proud of me. I watched a new show. Not only did I watch it, but I finished it. I'm that so minute. excited. You didn't tell me, but I, so the other I day I texted you and I said, but I didn't even like do correct pronunciation or uh, capitalization. And then I, I was like, she never commented on it, but then I went back and looked at it and I was like, Oh, it probably really got lost. Cause it looked like I just said, nobody likes us. <laughs> Or, or something like that. I and didn't because I was going to surprise you with the fact that I watched a new show. All right. Do really? tell, do tell your thoughts and feelings. I heard a lot of people talking about it. Um, and then when I went on and looked, and at first I was like, oh, there's 10 episodes. I'm already too far behind. I can't do it. Yeah. But then when I looked and I was like, oh, these are like 22, 27 yeah. episodes. Like it's a quick watch. Um, And so I had started watching a couple like on my lunch break. And then this past weekend, I just sat down and watched the rest of them. It is so good. And I think the reason I enjoyed it even more is it's been a long time since we've had a really good rom-com. Yeah. In a movie, in a TV show or anything. And this one was so like when I finished the 10th episode, I was already ready for season two. I hope they get picked up for a second season. It's all where they're like considering it. Yeah, their casting was phenomenal. The storyline so on. Yeah. had so much going on to like you had enough different characters that you got invested in a little bit that you yeah. could really take this and go anywhere and it still be entertaining. It was so good. So good. So that's my the thing I'm liking this week too. I'm curious though, because okay, so you know that this is like loosely based on the real life story of Aaron Foster, who is the daughter of David Foster. Um, If you're not familiar with who that is, he's a famous musician. He's a little older. He's married to Catherine McPhee right now, currently. Um, But it's loosely based on her life. I mean, the guy she's married to is not a rabbi, which is a very integral part of this. Um, He's a record label owner, but he is Jewish. So it does track. Um, yeah, so when I first saw it, I was like, man, nah, because I don't, I'm not instantly sucked into a rom-com the way you are. Yeah. Not that I'm like turned off, but it's just not going to be the first thing I watch. And I had this feeling at first when I was like, Kristen Bale and Adam Brody, isn't he a yeah. little too ick? I was like, I don't know if I'm going to like this. So I watched the first episode and I was instantly hooked. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought... And I really like Kristen Bell as an actress. Like, I loved Veronica Mars. I didn't see all of it, but the ones I caught right. on TikTok, of course. Um, I really yeah. enjoyed. Um, and I loved him in the OC. He wasn't my favorite part, but I did love him. And so I was like, oh, they're great. But I want to say their supporting cast is fantastic. Um, yes. Jackie, so- what's her name? Jackie Tan, maybe, uh, that plays um, Esther. Yes. The sister-in-law. She, um, I didn't realize, like, she and Kristen Bell were each other's first friend in LA. And I'm like, that is so fun. Yeah. She is fantastic. Um, I thought the guy that played Sasha, Adam Brody's older brother was so good. Um, I thought her, uh, the podcast producer, the Asian woman, she was fantastic. Her sister. I thought I was going to be super annoyed with her. 
so she was phenomenal. And did you know she was pregnant the whole time they were filming? No. Yeah, she's like five months pregnant. Oh, like, oh. Well. yeah. I think um, just the characters, how sarcastic they were, and <laughs> that really drew us in. I'm telling you, the writing on that show is really, really good. So impressive. Um, and so I saw where they interviewed Erin Foster the other day, and she said that she's considering writing a second season. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, I hope she does. But then there's part of me that's like, oh, I don't want it to be a letdown though. Cause you know, that's sometimes true. you can be a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it is so good. If you haven't seen it again, yeah, you can watch it super quick. Um, yeah. And it's like, you will be sad when it's over. Yeah. Um, it's so funny. It's so funny. Probably one of my favorite, I mean, I could probably pick a bunch, but one of my favorite scenes that's sticking out in my head right now is when they're at the basketball game. Uh huh. <laughs> and they uh, and she calls her sister. She like drops her pen and her sister comes and brings alcohol. And then all the Jewish wives and them get drunk together. Yeah. <laughs> That's so good. It cracks me up. I, I was I concerned at the time that the sister and Sasha were going to have an affair. And I was not going to be happy about that. But they did. not That made me a little uneasy. And I was like, oh, don't go there. Don't go there. But they kept yeah. it normal. And I liked that. Yeah. I loved That's when cool. Kristen's character went over to meet Adam's parents at the house and she took the charcuterie board. Oh yeah. And she, she thought that listen, when she comes back out and you know you've got that card to play and it has that petty okay. moment. Oh, it was so yeah. good. So good. Um the, I'm just the writing, I keep going back to the writing being so good for people that are not like established Hollywood screenwriters, yeah. you know, it was so good. And there was like so many things I thought were about to happen and they didn't. And I was so glad, but like kind of the suspense of it, like the Sasha and the sister. And then um, I was so glad to find out that it was the ex fiance, not even really fiance, but it was her lying and not the sister lying. Like yes. I guess I'm kind of spoiling a few things, but some of those things like they just really wrote that show really well. It's they so really good. did. It Nobody so wants this. Fantastic. And it is so good. Yep. On Netflix. Netflix. Um, all right. Anything else for today's episode? Yeah, I think we've covered quite a bit. <laughs> yes. We will be back next week following up on football stuff. If we have Taylor news, we'll talk about it. I have no idea when we're recording, but maybe Miami will have happened. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. God yeah. to all of you in Florida. Get the heck out of Dodge. Um, all right. Well, thanks for listening. Bye y'all. <laughs>